I've been thinking about this long and hard. It's been a difficult few days going over what I should do. Use the veto, not use the veto. I see the pros and cons to either decision, and quite frankly, even as I stand here before you now, I'm still not convinced that what I'm about to say is the right thing. A wise man once said, only the righteous will prevail. And with that in mind, I have decided to not. Not, not not, double not, reverse that, Bolan Klovich not, or maybe I will, use the veto on... Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Perdium, and let's talk about the evolution of that veto speech and the evolution of the power of veto in Big Brother. One of, if not the best twists to ever be introduced to the game, I think it's only fitting it gets its own video discussing what it is, where it came from, and how it has evolved over the decades. Because, believe it or not, there is more to the veto than just the silver, gold, and diamond variants, and I want to talk about them, if only because the veto has a lot of wiggle room as far as capabilities, and in order to better understand where we are, or could be, we first need to know where we've been, and where we shouldn't go ever again. For the uninitiated, all five of you, the power of veto, the POV, or just the veto, is a power in Big Brother that allows the person who wins a certain competition to save one of the nominated players from the chopping block from being voted out that week. The person who wins the veto is also safe from being voted out, so it's a bit like the immunity necklace from Survivor if you were able to give it up to another person at the same time while also remaining safe yourself. Eric and Micronesia is weeping. Just as recent as like a week before this video was created, the right player winning the veto at the right time can make all the difference and can really shake up the week the game, and the season all in one go. Its impact to the game is akin to the hidden immunity idol in Survivor. In fact, even more so, and I think many would argue that without the power of veto, is Big Brother even the same game? Whereas in Survivor, you can eliminate idols and the game is very much recognizable, in Big Brother, the veto is so integral to the show, it's almost impossible to envision a season without it. I won this veto and I'm proud of this. I haven't said that a lot about myself in this lifetime. Cause I'm very hard on myself, but I'm so proud of it. And yet, crazily enough, the very first season of the game, Big Brother 2, did not have a power of veto at all all. Each week there was a head of household competition to determine who held the power to nominate two people for eviction, but after the nominations, that was it. The two nominees were locked in place until eviction night the following week. Sounds a little predictable, doesn't it? Amusingly enough, I would say that Big Brother 2 is actually really unpredictable, if only because of one player, but I think over enough iterations of the BB2 game seen again and again, the power of veto would prove to be a worthwhile addition. Some even say that not having a power of veto each week makes the game more difficult because it's much more static and locked in place, whereas others would argue including a veto is more tricky to traverse because if the wrong person wins the POV in any given week, suddenly a hapless bystander can get knocked out, whereas without the veto, anyone who is not initially nominated is safe. There are more variables in play with the POV, and I do think that its inclusion makes the game more complicated, so I would probably fall into that latter camp, though I do understand both sides have merit. I think the producers immediately recognized the slow pace of the BB2 season and took action to shake up the game. From week one of Big Brother 3 the following year, the power of veto was first introduced, right after the nomination ceremony but before the eviction. However, unlike the veto that we all know and love today, the original veto was made of silver. Were the producers intentionally leaving room for an upgrade? The silver power power of veto is slightly different from the more recognizable gold version. The silver POV would still protect you from being voted out if you want it, and you could use it on either of the two nominees. However, the major difference between the silver and the gold veto is that if you were nominated for eviction and you won the silver POV, you couldn't use it on yourself. So basically from a strategic point of view, if you were nominated, winning the veto was just not in your best interest, which compared to the gold veto is quite a dramatic difference. In fact, so dramatic of a difference that the silver POV was only ever used once all throughout Big Brother 3. Amusingly, it was in the first week. I have made a decision that I am gonna veto someone's nomination. Marcellus, I'm gonna veto your nomination. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. 
and I have to cast a stone at myself. I think that point is a big reason why it was completely removed the following year in Big Brother 4. It's important to note that through Big Brother 3 and 4, everyone in the house competed for the power of veto each week. There was no random draw, it was not just six players like it is today. It was a house-wide event. Which also meant, as a consequence, it was very possible for players who had no stakes in the veto competition to win the POV. And then, of course, not use it. So it's not too surprising when it was only used once in BB3. At the final five of Big Brother the three, the golden POV was introduced, the one that we all know and love. For this was one special golden boy. Whoever won this veto could use it on themselves if they were a nominee. Pretty powerful stuff, huh? Big Brother 4 made the Golden Veto a permanent fixture in the game. From week one until the very end of the season, the Golden Veto was in play. However, despite this, the Veto still wasn't used very much because the entire house was still competing for it, so anyone could win it. So, in Big Brother 5, this rule was changed so only six people could compete each week instead of everyone. This radically changed how often the power of veto would get used. In BB3, it was only used once. In BB4, it was used three times, but in BB5, it was used seven. One last thing I wanna point out here is that at the end of Big Brother 4, at the final four, the veto was introduced as the diamond power of veto because the winner of the POV would get to cast the sole vote to evict by process of elimination. This diamond status doesn't actually really mean anything though, as it was revoked in BB5 because it was still the same golden veto, may as well just call it that. Bear in mind, there was no power of veto at the final four of Big Brother 3. When the golden veto was first introduced at the final five of BB3, that was the final veto of the season. I guess the producers figured a veto at the final four was a little bit too powerful, too much power for one competition, but then looking at history now, I would wager it's still pretty compelling stuff. I've decided to use the power of veto to save you, Dan. There's something big in this house. You're gonna have one shot to break up, and this is that shot. So Shane, I'm sorry I have to evict you. As far as the evolution of the golden power of veto goes, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, so why is this video that much longer? That's the evolution of the power of veto. What's going on? Well, you observe an owl, there's actually a fair bit more to discuss. While yes, the golden POV hasn't really changed since the final five of Big Brother 3 nearly 20 years ago now, it has had upgrades, modifications, twists, spins, bops, and other such silly words done to it over the years. For example, back in 2010 with Big Brother 12, the diamond power of veto was revived, but it was no longer masquerading as the golden POV from Big Brother 4. This diamond level status was a major upgrade to its power, as the holder of the diamond veto could not only remove a nominee from the chopping block, they could also pick the replacement nominee, all right before the live eviction. Super powerful. Too powerful, really. And it wasn't handed out like the usual veto is. It wasn't won in a competition, but was just doled out as a secret power that was not disclosed to anyone else in the cast, except for the person who received it. We also saw the threat of the diamond POV with Big Brother 21, a rather recent season as of this video, and personally, for my sake, I'm kind of hoping that we never see it again. And I saw a, a briefcase on the screen, and I figured it was like money, and it was, and it was another one of those dollar cards. There's some things that Matt said that were kind of fishy to me. You know, I thought Matt definitely got some cha-ching. I'm not buying Matt's story. I'm pretty well convinced that nobody sitting around the backyard bought the lie that I told them. But beyond the diamond veto, there have actually been a lot of other versions that I want to talk about. The double, the duel, the boomerang, the VIP, the secret, the spotlight, the blood, and even a veto called the black hole. Hole. And no, that is not Jackson's tolerance for eating watermelons. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. There have been a lot of other one-off powered up versions of the veto that have come to exist, so let's go over them. First up, the dual power of veto, which was introduced in Big Brother 13. This was a weird week one veto twist that allowed both nominees to come off of the block with one use. Likely because the pre-jury twist for that season involved duos, this veto is twice as powerful as the usual veto. Likewise, it also existed in Big Brother Canada 3, but we have not seen it since. In Big Brother 14, we saw the golden ball of veto, also known 
known as the double veto. There's really nothing too interesting about this one. It's just two vetoes existing side by side in one week. Usually there's only one veto each week, but some twists have introduced a second one, such as in Celebrity Big Brother 2. In Big Brother Over the Top, the two vetoes were doled out in one competition instead of two, unlike in BB14. So you didn't really need to get first in the veto comp, just top two to win one of the two vetoes for that week. Not that interesting to talk about, but it is a footnote. Likewise, in Big Brother Over the Top, we saw the dual veto from Big Brother 13 return, but it was rebranded as the boomerang veto. That said, there was a difference between the duel and the boomerang. The dual veto had to be used on both nominees if it was going to be used. The boomerang veto had the option to use it on both of the nominees or just one, which I think makes it slightly more powerful. This veto was then brought back for Celebrity Big Brother 1 and rebranded one more time as the VIP veto, but unlike the duel or the boomerang, the VIP veto was also slightly modified and made even more powerful. While the VIP veto could be used on either both or just one of the nominees, what made it better, and I think the most powerful version of this one, was that it could be used to both save one nominee and then after that first nominee was taken down from the block, the HOH would then put up a replacement nominee, to which the holder of the VIP veto could veto off the replacement nominee as well. The boomerang veto had to be used before the HOH named a replacement, which to me makes the VIP veto a significant upgrade. Omarosa will name a replacement nominee. I will then ask you if you would like to save another nominee. Omarosa will then have to name a second replacement nominee. Is everyone clear? Yeah, yeah, it's yes. a lot, but yeah, I got it. Also in Celebrity Big Brother 1, we saw the Spotlight Veto, which was known as the Force Veto in BB Can 3, which meant that the holder of this veto had to use it to save a nominee. Normally the veto holder gets to decide if they want to use it or not, but the Spotlight puts the Spotlight on the veto holder and forces them to save someone even if they don't necessarily want to. And as far as any of the modifications to a veto go, I like the Spotlight Veto the most by far. I actually think it would make for an amusing twist to implement for a future season. If you win the veto, you have to use it. So suddenly backdoors are even more prevalent and winning the veto all willy-nilly isn't such a great idea. Also, the HOH gets even riskier because you will for sure be nominating three people People each week. In Big Brother Canada 2, we saw the secret power of veto, which was basically a regular golden veto, except the person who had it wasn't known to the rest of the cast. Players couldn't factor this secret veto into their strategy, except for the player who held it. It was one of the secret powers that was hidden in a secret room in the house, had a short shelf life, and if the person who found the secret veto told anyone that they had it, they would be instantly evicted. BB can producers, that is pretty dang harsh if you ask me. But in Big Brother Canada 5, we saw a funny little variant of this secret veto called the Black Hole Power of Veto. Kind of like Swedish Fish flavored Oreos. The naming could probably use some work, but Big Brother Canada 5 was space themed, so I guess we will just dunk it in milk and see what happens. The Black Hole Veto was almost identical to the secret veto, However, there was one slight change. When the secret veto holder from Big Brother Canada 2 used the veto, it was revealed to the entire cast who held the secret veto. When the black hole veto user used this veto in Big Brother Canada 5, it wasn't revealed to the cast who used it. So it was entirely anonymous and it was up to the black hole veto holder to tell anyone else that it was them who used it. They don't have to tell anyone, just leave it a guessing game. House guess, a secret power of veto has been found. This power allows them to secretly save someone from the block. They have decided to use this power today and save. And then the very last variant of the power of veto thus far in Big Brother history was the Blood Veto from Big Brother Canada 7. The Blood Veto was uber powerful, easily the most powerful veto ever concocted, and I freaking despise it. The Blood Veto has the craziest power ever. It allows the holder to cancel all of the eviction votes for a player at a live eviction 
and instead the other person on the block gets evicted. So if it was like a 10 to zero vote, all 10 votes disappear and the person with zero votes goes home. It's essentially the hidden immunity idol from Survivor, but on Big Brother and it just, it doesn't work in this game at all. Big Brother is not Survivor, where anyone can be voted for and thus playing an idol is a lot more skillful. When the vote is A or B, and you can cancel all votes on A, it's just broken. It's straight broken. Low IQ, no thank you. But it is interesting to note how it is very similar to the idol, yet I just don't think it works with the Big Brother format, and it's pretty obvious why. But that's where we are with the power of veto over the several decades of this crazy game. From the silver to the gold to the numerous variants, that is the evolution of the power of veto in Big Brother. I think there is a lot more to see in regard to the veto. There's different types that could exist in the future. So I'm curious to know what do you guys think about all of this? Do you have any crazy ideas for like a future flavor of veto to exist? Either way, my name has not evolved just yet. It is still pretty. I'm saying thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to spill a little bit of blood with your veto on your way out. And I will see you in the next one. Hold up. You know what, Julie? I think it would be downright depressing to sit and watch green bananas turn yellow. So I have decided in the end to use the power of veto on Sandra Diaz Twine. Sandra, not for you. Get out of here, for real. Jerry, that one's for you too. Damn it.